Okay. Hi everyone and welcome to a special Ginkgo tutorial. My name is Zero and I'll be your instructor for today. That may sound a little deflated because I actually did this tutorial before and right at the end um, Bandicam decided wanted to crash and I lost all my footage. <laughs> so I have to start all over again. Um, just a warning about this, this, this tutorial is going to be insanely long. Uh, the first time I did this tutorial it went well into the two hour mark and you know that's way longer than I usually like to do my tutorials but it's just so much to teach or so much to show or the process is so time consuming, I think that's the better word, the process is so time consuming that time just kind of slipped away. So again, um, I apologize for the length of this tutorial as well as the screaming of my computer. You're going to be hearing that a lot because, you know, my baby's old and um, it can't really be helped at this point. So in this tutorial, we're going to show you how to make a ball gown. Now, I'm pretty sure if anybody was in Second Life back in the day, you know that ball gowns was like the number one outfit that every woman in Second Life would wear. Uh, but around the time Mesh came out, uh, ball gowns kind of went the way to the dodo because no one wanted to be seen wearing a flexi skirt when, you know, there was beautiful Mesh. And the problem I see nowadays with some Mesh ball gowns is either uh, they just make the big poof and the ball gown doesn't move or it's a pretty ball gown but it's very narrow and it's not stretched out. Um, so I'm going to show you my method of making really big ball gowns even though I think then the one I did before was kind of small in comparison to how big they usually get. Uh, so for this tutorial, you'll need a, a blender. I'm using Blender 2.72 as always. <laughs> um, a copy of Avastar. Um, any Avastar will do. Uh, I'm on 1.71 right now, but it also works on the 1.1 that I used to give out before. Uh, sparkles is optional, but if you do have sparkles, it'd be great, especially when you combine a bunch of parts together and you're uh, losing the texture. So sparkles is great to have. Pro, not light, because light don't do jack. Um, optional stuff that I guess I would strongly recommend you having is um, ZBrush, because I use ZBrush to do the quick topology. Um, I don't have time to do it manually by hand in Blender. Plus, I don't know how to do it manually or by hand in Blender. Um, and the Darkstorm Viewer. I use that to help with my decorations because I usually just build the... Um, What's it called? I build the dress here in Blender and in Marvelous Designer, but I do all my real decoration with like jewels and flowers and things like that in Second Life, and then I export it out and then put it here in Blender and then rig it. I found that using Darkstorm is a lot easier to do than using like Firestorm or Singularity to export because it grabs the textures as well and it exports it out a little bit better than you know Firestorm does by default. I don't know why, but it just does. Um, so that's totally optional up to you if, you're, so if you can make your own decorations and stuff. I just think that's easier. Um, this tutorial may not be as the same as my other ones only because, um, uh, I don't know. You'll see when it goes on. I'm going to try to keep my speech as clear as I possibly can, but um, expect some mumbling. I'm sorry. I'm just not used to explaining and doing that much work at the same time. So, with all that done, we're going to start our tutorial, and I'm going to press in and actually start the screencast thing because, you know, I always forget to turn it on. Alright, I've already imported my shape into Avastar, and if you don't know it by now, I'll go over one more time for you. You go File, Import, and then Shape as Avastar. Now, if you don't see Shape as Avastar in there, then that means that you didn't properly install Avastar. So go back and then reinstall it and then try and then you should see Shape as Avastar. And when you select that, it'll say where's the XML. And we already have like a ton of videos on how to do that. So you just click your XML and import your shape and this is what you get. If you have a mesh body that you want to make a ball gown for, the method is pretty much the same except for you just follow along with the dev kit instead of using the default um, avatar shape. 
um, because I'm not wearing a mesh body and I really like my Linda Lab body, I'm going to be using that in this tutorial because it's a lot easier for me. So first thing we're going to need to do with our um, to make our ball gown is first have our model and that's my shape right here. And the next thing we're going to do is go to another layer and we're going to press Control Shift A and it brings up the add menu and from here we're going to select mesh and cylinder and on the side I already have this set but for you guys it'll be like this you'll see on the left hand side you will see a little menu here and it says add cylinder and it says vertex radius depth you're just going to ignore all that and you're going to scroll down to where it says cap fill type by default it'll say ingons and you're going to switch it from ingons to nothing um, this helps out later on because uh, of what we're going to make right now. Oops, I forgot to tell you what we're making now with the cylinder. Um, while we have the cylinder, we are going to make a petticoat. Because even in real life, you can not have a ball gown without some sort of expanding petticoat. Whether it's the petticoat or the bird cage. I forgot what the proper term for that is. Um... I forgot what it's called. I know it, but I just can't. Hoop skirts. Okay, so there's petticoats and then there's a hoop skirt. But I always like calling them bird cages. So what we're going to create now is our petticoat that goes underneath the dress. And that is going to give it the uh, the shape in Marvelous Designer. So well, now that we have our cylinder, I'm going to press shift and activate the first layer. Bring our model back. And we're going to click on the cylinder and we're going to press the S key and I'm going to scale down and I'm going to try to put us back in the center as centery as I can and I'm going to scale it down until it is about around her hips um, it would be great if she was inside the cylinder as well and this is going to be the start of our petticoat um, now I know some people are like, well when you're making a skirt, you know you can just make the fabric stiff and then press the inflate and then you can spread it out that way. That is true. But when I was bored one evening and actually read the Marvelous Designer manual, they suggested that for making garments like this that you create a petticoat um, externally and then import it in. So that's what I'm doing now and I found I got better results because sometimes when you inflate and then freeze it like that in a Marvelous, um, it can just go crazy and it ruin all your work. So that's why we're making a petticoat now. Alright, so now that we have our avatar in a cylinder, we're going to press the tab key. I'm just going to move this here so we can get a better view. We're going to press the tab key, and then we're going to press Control R, and you'll see a purple loop go around the cylinder. This is going to be our loop cut. You're going to right click on it, and then the purple loop will turn into a yellow loop, and we're going to scale all the way up until the first start the curve of your avatar's hips. So I'm going to click right here. And then when we have that loop, we're going to press S and scale out. Whoops. <laughs> I think I have. There you go. Make sure your proportional editing is off. So I'm going to press S and scale out slightly. And then I'm going to press Control R again. And then go around further to her hips. And then press S again. Control R. Click it. Pick another loop. S again. And around here and then S again. We're going to press alt, hold down Alt and select the loop up here at the very top and click on one of the dots here to select the whole ring of loops and I'm going to press S and scale in on to where I want it to be. Let's see about here. It's about fine. So I'm going to press R again and we're just gonna control R and I think I need to select the bottom and just drag it down just put the arrow and then pull it down to as long as you want your petticoat to be I want a full lower length dress I'm gonna put it down to her feet and I'm gonna press S again and then stretch it out to about here that's about as wide as I want the petticoat to be and you can press R again and you just bell it out until it looks like you want it, the way you want it. I think when it comes to petticoats, you're supposed to go from top 
and work your way down to get the best shape. Kind of looks like not so hot. So, if you feel like you need more of a definition into it, just add another loop cut. So, just go control R and then add another loop, and then you're able to <laughs> add it where you think it needs to be poofed out some more. But I think around this should be fine for a petticoat. In fact, it's rather small. My petticoats are usually a lot bigger. So I'm just going to click on the loop and then stretch it out a little bit more to about that. I like bell shaped dresses. <laughs> so um, there's a whole chart that shows you all the types of petticoats for what type of dress you're making. And you can use that as a guide for it. And just tune it up a little more. And you're going to want to grab this back vertex here and turn on a proportional editor. And before you move anything, press oops, press G, and you can scroll in or scroll out to increase the uh, amount of influence that the editor has. I like to put a nice small influence and push it against my avatar's backs while slowly widening the influence so that it all kind of goes in nicely. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just good that you don't have a gap in the middle, like like such a big gap. You just want to push it in. So it's okay if it goes inside your avatar a little bit. It is totally fine. So here is my bell shaped petticoat. And I think I want to stretch it out a little bit more like that. And there we have a petticoat that we can use for our, our dress. So step one is done. Pat yourself on the back. You did good. Now that we have our petticoat. We're going to want to mix this to change the smoothing to smooth. If we leave it as flat, when you go to wrap the fabric around the dress, like so, um, Marvel Designer's fabric will cling to it and um, you'll get all these faces and stuff on your dress. And I don't, I don't think there's a way to remove that. So make sure that it's nice and smooth. Okay, now that we have our petticoat selected, we're going to export our avatar to Marvelous Designer. Quiet, you. So, click on your skirt, hold down shift, select your torso, and then select your head if you have one. When you have all the parts selected, you're going to export this file, export, and as an OBJ. Now, I know normally I would say export it as a day. But for some reason, whenever you do that with the Marvelous Designer, will shoot the petticoat up to your head or on the side or below. It just moves it out of place. So I found that exporting things like that as a day um, really works out. Even if you join it to the avatar, it still does it. So export as a day to, to I mean, export as an object, OBJ, to save yourself that headache. So make sure before you export, you have the selection only checked or else you'll get everything that goes to the avatar, including the skirt and multiple eyes and the hair. It's gross. So make sure that object selected is checked before you export. So with that done, we're just going to save this as pettyavatar.obj and hit OK. So that's pretty much it with Blender right now. So I'm just going to save this project. Um, not that. And I'm just going to save it. And I'm going to close this and we're going to go over to Marvelous Designer. Okay, so we're here in Marvelous Designer and it's the startup here with the avatar. We're going to bring in our petty avatar. So let's go file, uh, open avatar, and select petty avatar, and then press M and hit OK. And you'll see we'll have our giant Second Life avatar and her bum ball gown. Actually, I think I may have moved my petticoat a little too low. It's below the line, but I guess that'll help prevent some um, fabric from going underneath my feet. <laughs> okay, so um, let's press new and get rid of the default clothes and let's start designing our ball gown. It's always a good idea to have an idea of what you want to design before you dive in. 
There's nothing worse than sitting in Marvel's designer for hours trying to figure out what you want. So have a sketch or a reference picture of what you want first and then dive into it. I'm going to teach you a few techniques of creating a ball gown that may help you ease that burden. So first we're going to need a bodice or a top part to the dress. So let's make a few bodices. Um, first one is a... I don't really know the name of it. I just, I guess I can call them. Fun. It's like that maiden type dress that you see in those medieval type dresses. There's a t shirt. And then just do the front. And remember, Marvelous Designer is just here for the original prototyping. You're going to do more of your detail work and so on in other programs. So I'm just going to sew this together. Press play. And it's going to give me this. Now, my thing is a little jacked up right now. And that's because of my... Um, what's it called particle distance right now I'm trying to make it as low um, what do you call it uh, low impacts uh, you know not enough a lot of polygons on it everybody says that Marvel's designer makes stuff too dense well I tried to lighten it and if you think that yours is too dense as well or you're having a really slow sink you can change the pattern's particle distance. The higher the number is, the lighter it is in triangles, and the lower the number is, the higher triangles you use. So we had it at 40. Let me show you what it's like at 20. You see, it fuses to the avatar. It's the quality of it goes up a little bit better. So, uh, rearrange the pattern. Now, you find that your avatar, your garment is sinking into your avatar like so. And even if you, oof, excuse me. Um, even if you, what's it called? Rearrange the pattern around you, like so, and you snip it back, it's still going through. You may have to change your avatar's properties. So we're going to go up to the very top where it says avatar and then go avatar properties and then change the skin offset. As you can see it pushes changing the values there and the offset or so will push the fabric further away from the body. There's also something you can play with. I think it was the. Uh, I wish it would stay open. You have to keep clicking it. The static friction is also something to play with. I never really got a chance to play with all of the. I just knew that skin offset was the right thing to pick. The play with, so I always did it. So feel free to play around with those and see what gives you the best results. Because you know you can also fix it in Blender, but if you if it kills you that often, it's better to just fix it in here. So I'm gonna pull this out a little bit, and there you go. So that's one bodice type <clears throat> that I can't seem to get to work. All right, there we go. That's one bodice type of dress. Um, another one is the ever so popular sweetheart. So we can just remove these sleeves right here. See if that works out. And we have a sweetheart. I think um, sweethearts really have traditionally a very plunging kind of heart neckline. I think that might be why they call them sweethearts. Or something like that. I never realized until doing this just how flat chested my character really is. I thought I had more boobs than this. I guess I was just used to doing that matria body for so long. <laughs> uh -oh, my 
default second life one is fairly flat. All right, I'm gonna think about you do these sweetheart neck these uh, sleeveless dresses is that they tend to fall down a lot when you go to attach your skirt. So before you attach your skirt, make sure you freeze your pattern and keep it. I personally like having um, sweetheart dresses, so I think I'm going to leave it as that, but just frozen. All right, so now we have our bodice tight, and just draw the shape out with the polygon tool. That's just... I can be here all day showing you different types. Um, sleeves, same thing. I like puffy sleeves on these kind of dresses. At least that's the one I'm going to make for this. So I'm going to add a square here. <laughs> okay, I'm going to add a square. Redo that. Let me redo this. I'm going to add a rectangle here. And I'm only going to do one arm because it saves a bit of time. We can always just mirror it in Blender. So you're going to take one rectangle and put it back here, right here. Actually, I can probably save myself some time. No, this is just in case you want to have it in a different texture. All right, so I'll, I'll do this way. So I'm just going to sew these two together. And then we're going to add the long sleeves that goes here. So take the rectangle and stretch it down here and copy paste or copy and then paste, whichever. And like always, the one that goes in the back gets flipped and we drag it back here. Then we are going to, hmm, how did I do this before? We can just sew it to here. If it doesn't work, we can just undo it. Sorry, it's been quite a bit since I sewed on a ball gown. Well, I did one earlier and it didn't quite work out. Alright, so. Here we go. Let me sew these two parts together. And then we press play, and that goes there. That's not quite as right as I would like it, so I'm going to move it up some more. Whoops. Ah, shoot. I broke it, flipped it, there we go, I just want to rearrange the pattern, tee hee hee, I'm going to pull the sleeve up here, just like that, pull it up there, grab this, pull that up here, so it's not going into the hands, and do the same thing for back there, pull that up a bit. And then we press play and hope I didn't break it too bad. I think I did. Alright, there we go. So that's my sleeve. Could have just did that and fixed it in the first place. This is why I usually go for sleeveless dresses because of this crap. Alright, we'll fix it and then fix this. Alright, there we go. That's a good. Uh. There we go. Now that's a good sleeve. So then we have our sleeve. I'm going to puff it out in Blender so. I'm not too worried about it right now. I don't want it to move, so I'm going to freeze this as well. Uh, and do show all patterns. Pattern only. Freeze pattern. There we go. 
Now, time for the fun part, skirt. So now let's add a skirt. There are two types of skirts that you usually use in Marvel Designer. Well, at least two types when it comes to making these ball gowns. Um, I use the long square skirt, I mean rectangle skirt, or we use the circle skirt. So let's take our the point that's right here and let's get rid of these two middle points. And we're going to make our long rectangle skirt. So take a, what tool is this? The create rectangle tool. Click and you're going to make a long rectangle that spans just over the dress. Whoops, and press, so there we go. <laughs> and we're going to rearrange the pattern so it's nice and straight and pull it outside of the dress. Then we're going to press Control C and Control V and make a duplicate of it. And then I'm going to flip this one and then put it back here. And then we're going to just go back, do our usual, and sew these edges together. Then we're going to do the same thing up here. I can sew the front. There we go. So go from the body and sew it back here. Then we're going to press play. Now if all goes well, it should fit around your dress like so. If it's too tight around it, you can just grab the edge and then just, you know, um, stretch it outward. Okay, it's falling a bit more. I feel so bad for my computer. And if it's too short, just grab the ends. And slowly, in small increments, drop the skirt down. Do not drag it and then rush it all the way down there. No, 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 no. It's a fast way of crashing out. Small butts. And that's how you get your skirt to go. Now if you want it to be a little more high quality than this, you can go back to that particle distance that I was talking about earlier and we can turn that back up to like 20. You see it looks a lot better this way than it did with the, um, the other one. So now we have our rectangle skirt. We can just save here for a second. So I'm going to turn this then off so my computer can stop screaming. Alright, save as. And we're going to save this project as a rectangle ball gown. And before I export this, I'm just going to scoot that over. And this, so we have a pretty UV map. And then export OBJ. And I'm going to name this one Rectangle Ball Gown 1. And we're going to hit M. These two boxes here. Unified UV coordinates. Collapsed cloth triangles. And then make sure cloth shape is saved. Hit OK. And that's how we have pretty much a basic ball gown. Now if you want to try making a circular ball gown skirt. We're going to need to go back into our pattern and add in a point. It can be out of the front or the back. It doesn't really matter, but I usually just add it in the front. So next thing we're going to do is go up to the top and select our create a circle button. I'm going to click on the circle and make a rather large circle. And then we're going to take our 
this gizmo thingy right here and we're going to rotate it so that the front of the pattern the front of this the shiny white part is facing up like so it's crooked as all heck but it's okay all right so we have our circle and it's around our lady <laughs> it's really off center but again it's cool don't worry about it doesn't have to be perfect so we have our circle and now we're going to put a hole in it so we need to go over to the internal design tools and create click the button that says create internal circle then you're going to go to wherever you think the center of the circle is and we're just going to move it to right here i guess Whew, that's way off center all right right there all right now we have our circle created we're just going to click on the middle of it and then press right click bring up the menu and select convert to hole and then you should see a hole rip open on your avatar skirt so I'm just gonna move the skirt down here so it's a little easier to say um, because it's kind of hard to see white on stark white or this shade of blue I'm just going to go over to the fabric and add a color to it a fun fact for you is that whenever you add a color to a piece of the pattern, you're assigning it its own material. So when you go on a blender and you have to separate things, you can click a separate from material and it will divide by whatever colors they are. So that's fun and a good thing to keep in mind when you're working on marvelous designer stuff. Okay, so we made it red so you can easily see. And I'm going to select the, what's this thing called? Segment sewing. So we're in a 3D window. And we're going to take, oh, find out where we are. This is the back side of the skirt because, as you see, it's only one part right here. So I'm going to select this again and I'm going to rotate it around town. So we find the point where it is two so this is one and that's two so this is the front of our skirt now so I'm going to select this part and I'm going to sew it to as a dress and I click this part and find another point and then we got the back side that's right here and we're going to sew it to there because it's only one you can do it in reverse and make the two parts in the back if you feel comfortable doing that as well there's no rules to it I just you know tend to do it that way all right, so I'm gonna twist it a little bit so that my lines are remotely kind of, kind of straight, and I'm gonna pull it around here so it's got a nice smooth um, transition when we simulate. So when we're ready, we just press play, and it's gonna wrap around it and give you that. That's actually really pretty. Don't you think? Now, I'm not very good with circle skirts. I've only recently started using them, so I don't know all the rules to it or how to manipulate them properly. So please bear with me in this next part. If it doesn't quite fit, we can do the same thing we did with the square and just make it bigger. But again, make it bigger in small parts. No gigantic, like, sharp increases. Slow and steady. We're going to be here for a while, so there's no rush in it. Nice, nice. A little more, a little more. Okay. Now, it seems to be draping around nicely. I did notice that if it is uneven in some way, you can take the hole that's here and, like, slide it around. And that, too, will control how it starts to drape so you see we got it a little bit longer in the front but not so much in the back so just try to play around with that if you like so I'm going to try stretching it one more time and put it right there hmm. all right so it's a little uneven, a lot of uneven. I'm going to try messing with the center circle and see if that helps straighten things out a bit. Wow, that's really pretty. I 
holding down shift will give it kind of a guide and a snap so you're not all over the place all right i think i can probably try editing the circle itself so i'm going to push click on it and it's going to create that marking spot and we can edit the circle itself and pull it out I'm sorry I just don't really use <laughs> circles so please bear with me if you are a marvelous master and you're looking at this shaking your head like no all you have to do is press Z press Z or something like that and if it is that simple please he don't hesitate to tell me <laughs> I like the way circle skirts look but I can never get them to cooperate with me properly if it's just a matter of doing something right, then by golly, I'll be happy to listen. Okay, so we have our circle skirt, and it is, for the most part, nice and down. Um, like before, we're going to increase the... Um, oof, sorry. We are going to increase the particle distance on it so that it looks a little more refined. So I'm going to change it from 40 to 20. Press play to simulate it for a second. And it looks a lot better. Like, I love those, that heavy cloth overlay. Oh, it's so pretty. Okay, so now that I've gagged over those for a little bit, um, let's export this as well. And we're going to name it um, Circle Ball Gal. And then we're going to just do the same thing. Press M. So these two boxes at the bottom. Remove the cloth shape. Remove the avatar shape and just leave the cloth shape. Hit OK. Okay. So now we have pretty much the basis of a ball gown. We're going to try doing the top decorations. Now, normally when it comes to working ball gowns, because, you know, my computer is not that great, I like to do it in layers. Um, you can, if your computer is strong enough, leave on this um, bottom skirt if you want. But it's okay if you want to take it off and then just work on a petticoat layer. Um, I'm going to try to leave it on there since it's not that bad. <laughs> All right, so now that we have our petticoat, we are going to save this again. It's a new project, and I'm calling it Circle Ball Gown, and we're going to let that save. That way, if Marvelous decides it wants to crash, we have a save spot we can just load it back up to without having to go back from the beginning. Um, I'm going to turn the particle thing back up to, like, 60 or something. That way, it's not hurting... Um, while we work because we don't need it to be like full on while we're working alrighty so now that we have our skirt all right here let's go on to the top skirt because it's not a princess dress or a ball gown without that uh, bustle I think that's the proper word the bustle around the thing you know like uh, it goes like this and like this eh? okay so let's talk let's start since we already have our bodice here, we're going to go and use our internal tools right here. And I'm going to draw a line from, I guess, a little bit right here <laughs> and hold down shift. And I'm going to create a, a middle point. Nope, nope, nope. Actually, I think that wouldn't be so bad. Let's create two lines. One here in one there making sure they're as close and as even as possible that's why i usually like to make one line and then add points to it that makes it a lot easier to keep it even but let's get wild and experiment a little bit so i'm gonna have two panels right here in the front and then i'm going to put the panel in the back one line in the back shoo flies Alright, so we have that, and then we're going to make our uh, draping panel thingies. Oh my gosh, hang on one sec. Okay, sorry about that. So I'm going to make, um, I'm going to use this create a rectangle tool, 
and I'm gonna make a long panel right here and I'm gonna move this up here in the front let me turn it slightly and I'm before I do it I'm going to do anything else I'm going to make this um, we're gonna go to change the layer that the panel is on so it doesn't conflict with the skirt so we're gonna select the layer I mean the panel here and we're gonna put it on layer two whoops layer two okay now I'm going to make a curve here so it has that princessy curve I was trying to describe like this and I may shorten this panel just a little bit about there now I want to make a mirror of this so we're just gonna right click on it and then do copy and then we're gonna click over here and do mirror paste or you can press Control R and it'll make um, identical panel just flipped now we have these two panels here we're going to sew them to the front of the dress so grab your segment sewer so this one right here up there and this up here there we go I'm just going to put this right here And before we slap these two on, we're going to make a back panel for the dress. So this one is just a plain old rectangle. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger than these two so it can wrap around properly. And because it's going on the back, you know what to do. Flip it horizontally and put it behind. And again, we're going to make sure this one is on layer two as well. Alright, now we're going to sew this top part to the line we put back here and then this to there this one right about here alright now that we have this stuff done let's try and press play and see what happens Okay, okay. Don't panic. We're going to redo this again. I'm going to rearrange this part of the pattern as well as this part of the pattern and that one as well. And I'm going to select the dress here and I'm going to freeze the pattern. So it's not interacting with what we want, don't want it to. So let's put this right here and then press play and let it try again. I guess I pushed it over a little too much. Again, it's kind of hard for me to see, so I'm going to assign these guys a new color so I can see what's going on, what's conflicting with what. So make that red as well maybe oh my god that's computer blue is too painful <laughs> always with red so let's move this it got hooked on one of the sharp edges of the dress down there so I'm just gonna pull it back over here till it's over and then select this let's make it something else not red uh, maybe pink Purple. Yeah, our green works. So let's go and change these to green as well. Oops. That's all the same green. Um, I think that was my fault because I rotated it. So I'm gonna rearrange the pattern one more time here and right there as well. <sighs> so that's what you get for rotating stuff, right? <laughs> Alright, so give me a second. Let me pause this and let me fix this. I'll be right back with you.
Okay, so I just decided to get rid of the skirt since it was causing a bunch of trouble. We already have it, so it should be fine. Alright, so now we have our top skirt, or the bottom, no, 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 uh, the bustle. And if you want to pull it closer together, you can, you know, play around with the pattern. Stretching it forward, I think, is the best way to do that. Now pull it there, and then you could just do the same thing on the other side. Holding it on shift, of course, and keeping an eye on the numbers to make sure that it's even. If you want it longer, it's the same thing. You would just grab the bottom part of the pattern, as well as the bottom part of the back pattern, and then just stretch it all down. And then you can make it as long as you want it. I think it'll look good if we make it almost as long as the actual skirt. So let's try pulling it down some more. I can remember how much what the skirt actually looked like. <laughs> Alright, I think that's about good. And that should cover the top coat, the top skirt. Now, um, like before, to keep up with appearances, we're going to turn the particle distance up to, I think it was 20 was the, the magic number we used for the high quality render. Oh, look how pretty the wrinkles look in the back. Oh my gosh. Alright, so we have that, and we're going to export it. Oh, so I'm not lagging. Let's turn off the simulation, export it at WJ, and we're going to call this second tier, yes. and again, medium, unified, and make sure that only cloth shape is selected, and hit OK. Now we're going to hit save, and save as, the project, same as, uh, second tier, and let it save. Mm. Alright, so it wouldn't be a princess dress if it didn't have ruffles. So we are going to make some uh, top the ruffles that go along the side of the dress and along the edge, pretty much along the edge of the top dress. So what we do is create a new, let me move this stuff out of the way. So what we do is we create a rectangle that is longer than the intended line so maybe about this long should give us a good amount of ruffle now the thing about ruffles are ruffles is oops I think I threw it off into oblivion so let's try it again yeah, there we go alright up here you now into oblivion the thing about ruffles is it's so like sensitive to the particle distance if you want a good ruffle you're gonna have to turn the particle distance up pretty low turn down pretty low to like 20 or maybe like 15 or so uh, to get something really nice so I would go maybe uh, 20 as a good one that should do it uh, if you don't it just looks really bad I hate it when it's low it's just chunky and gross so ruffles so we have a ruffle and it's longer than the line that we're going to sew it to and I'm just going to grab this select it and click it to it now you're going to make sure that it's on the same layer as whatever you're sewing it to otherwise the lace is going to try to eat whatever you're attaching it to so make sure that this is let's see this is layer two so this ruffle should also be layer two all right and we're going to just turn it slightly and then press play and pray that my computer does not blow up here it goes look at it ruffle it's scrunching it's going it's going it's there yay that wasn't so bad so now we have our ruffle and then we're just gonna take it and do the same thing on the other side like over here so we can pause this for a second click this control C control V paste and I'm gonna 
so the same thing up here. Whew, here we go. So after I finish draping, okay. Now that it's done draping, we're going to change the color on this so we can see it properly. Because again, it's so bright, white does nothing. Uh, All right, we can see that system blue, right? It's not staining your eyes too bad. Uh, maybe not. Uh, there we go. Royal purple. Oh, that's Barney purple. This is a, quite the Joker scheme going on here. Oh, oh, oh. no touchy. No touching the dress. <laughs> okay, so now we have to do is our bottom trim. So we're just going to take a copy of what we have now and control C, control V, make another panel here. And we are going to have to flip it horizontally because it's going back here and we're going to rotate it down here and because the back panel is actually wider than what we had here we're going to make this a bit longer as well to continue the ruffle because if we sew it as is it's going to be like yep it just fits and it won't ruffle at all so let's try making a little bit longer and just because my gut is telling me to, I'm going to save ruffles. <laughs> okay. Now, all right, I feel a little bit better about this. Now we're going to start sewing. So we're going to sew this to this part. But as you see, it only covers up like just the middle part. So we're going to have to give this even more love. So let's go and select this ruffle and for the sake of ease, let's rotate it so that it's the same as it's going right here. We're going to select the top part and find out where that is and there's going to be a point here. We're going to add points to it and then sew it around the dress. So there's a point right here and we need it to go from right here on this dress to right here. So that would be about here on the dress. So I want to add a point right there, and then we're going to do pretty much the same thing on this one. So I guess hazard a guess and see about that's too long. Let's see, right about here. All right, now we can begin sewing. So let's sew this part to <clears throat> not that part. Undo, damn you. Okay, so, so this part to that part, and this to the middle, and then this right here. Now, while it's still flat, we're going to sew the ends together. That causes quite a lot of problems if you forget to sew your ends together. So, grab those, and then the end. Great. I actually believe that it's twisted. No. Alright, so we're going to edit this and then just click reverse seam. See if that straightens it out. Yep, and now it's straight. And push together, say a prayer, and press play. It's skirting the bottom. It's going. It's going. Is it? Uh, it's almost done. That's why this is like the most stressful part of making this dress. It's like, <gasps> will it make it? Will it make it? It's still twisting. Right there too. Wait, it's still draping. So let it settle. And I think it's good. 
All right, so we're just gonna wait for that to finish draping. And as you see, it made like a really pretty train back there. I didn't think it was gonna do that. Oh, because I have the floor, I forgot. The, f the petticoat thing. All right, so that looks pretty dang good if I do say so myself. And I think it's time we save before I pass out from the suspense. So let's go and export this. Save as. Alright. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, duh. I'm like, why is it lagging so big? Cause it's <laughs> Alright, so export. And we're gonna name this second tier with ruffles. And M those two. And there we go. Now if you wanna jazz it up even more than this heaven all right we can try adding some sideways ruffles but that might be a bit too much ruffles hmm that is a technique that you would be good to know oh excuse me so i'm just going to show you anyway <sighs> let's remove you know what <sighs> all right let's try lace trim around front all right front trim so let's get rid of this trim so it's out of the way what we're going to do is create another um string of fabric so all right i'm going to create another rectangle and we're not simulating so we're going to put this right in the front And I'm going to sew this part to this, and that to that. It's also good if you are actually made into a triangle so that it slides into place a lot easier. So I'm just going to take these two points and bring them together. And once it's like that, Maybe a little bit shorter in here. You can press play and oh, wait, I forgot. It's got to be on the same layer. This is layer two, right? So that's got to be layer two as well. And then we press play. It's going to stretch and bend and break. gonna pull those two together uh, there's an easier way to do it than this one uh, so you know what I'll teach you about middle ruffles some other time the concept is basically you create a middle fabric and then you add some of these internal lines and then you just create ruffles all down the middle to however you go but we're already kicking into um an hour so let's not make it any longer than it has to be so that's pretty much it for marvelous designer right now I'm gonna close it and then go back into blender and we can start the preparations in there so take a breather I'll be right back okay so we're back here in blender and um, my avatar is still here with our old original petticoat so I'm gonna take our loyal petticoat and then throw it over here in the corner because we're not going to be using it anymore. All right, so we're going to go into a new layer and then just start importing things all willy-nilly. So first thing is up, we're going to go to File, Import, and OBJ, and I'm just going to select all of these together. Now, you normally can't import a bunch of OBJs at the same time. You need a script for that, and I'll put the script in with this class so you can do the same thing too. So if you want, we can start by the circle ball gown because I think that one was the most beautiful uh, the second tier um, the second tier with ruffles and we're just going to import them all at once we'll save the rectangle ball gown for later 
so here is our ball gown and all its parts and we're just going to start working on it and prepping it um, I'm normally one for using triangles and I don't mind them but I found that when you're working with something big like ball gowns having this in quads actually does work a little bit better so before I can turn it into quads I'm gonna to have to do some prep work on it and then we're gonna slap it into uh, ZBrush for a quick retopologizing <laughs> retopology treatment sounds like a beauty thing all right anyway silliness aside there should be another layer in here oh I forgot I, it's all one I forgot I forgot I forgot all right so here is our top coat and I have our other thing here what's this thing called their bottom skirt I'm going to start separating things what am I going to separate? I'm going to take the bodice from here and then press L and just get rid of it. Oh, what happened with that? Alright, so we're going to just take everything, press A, press P, and selection by material. And then we're going to grab this and just delete and get rid of it. For some reason, there are two versions of that. So I may have uploaded this twice. material as well and we can get rid of those two because we don't really need it and I'm going to go back over here to the first one as you can see it's kind of conflicting so I'm going to select the green top coat and we're going to go into edit mode and oh, I think they're separated here I'm going to combine these two back together because it makes what I'm about to do a lot easier so with the top coat selected, I'm going to press tab and go into edit mode and then I'm going to turn on the proportional editing. It's also called soft editing by some people and we're going to increase the field of influence and I'm just going to pull it out slightly. Oh, I have connected. You want to have enabled so it grabs everything and pull it out slightly so that it's not going in to the dress. So, pull this out here, grab that, pull it out here. This may actually give you a little bit more ball gown for your money. <laughs> Just make sure it doesn't separate it too much. Unless I didn't sew this part. I totally did sew it. Ah, that's cool. We'll just push the red dress in there. Nobody will know. I just want to pull this out and get more ball gown. Actually, I do believe I'm messing this thing up. <sighs> I thought so. Scoop you. I wish Blender was like Second Life where you can select something and press Control Z and go backwards and it snaps back into place. Nope. No such luck. Alright, let's try this one more time. Let's go back into edit mode. And pull this out here. You know what? I think I might. There we go. As long as the front is fine. The back we can just push the red ball gown in. Oh, so I didn't I somehow separated those two. That's sad. I mean, actually, if you want it to be kind of nitpicky and save, you know, impact, you could just delete this whole bag anyway because nobody will see it. But maybe your client wants to make it transparent. You never know. Never know. Hmm. I don't know what to do now, to be honest. Alright, I guess I'm gonna try pushing the raid in.
too much. Okay, so let's address this issue down here, which I don't get what happened unless I may have deleted the wrong one. You know what? I, I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to restart for a second. I feel like I did something really wrong by doing all those at the same time. So one at a time, just to remove some confusion. So I'm going to import the circle ball gown. Which is here. And then we go to another layer and import, oops, not day, object, not append, ugh. Import object. I have the circle ball gown and I'm gonna do the second tier, which was my mistake because I don't need the second tier. All we need is import object second tier with the ruffles that's where I messed up it so let's try this one more time with the proper alignment I'm going to remove these two parts because we don't need those and I'm going to bring it over here to this garment and like before, we're going to press tab, enable the proportional editing, and I'm going to pull it out again. And hopefully, it's not separated back there. So let's try it and see. Nope, see? Nice and connected. There we go. Problem solving at its finest. And we can try making it a little bit bigger. I don't think anybody's going to complain about a wider ball gown. I'm going to do the same thing here in the back and pull it here. Pull it out some more. I really hope this kind of brings back the, the uh, allure of ball gowns. Like, and back in Second Life, I don't know if I already said this in the beginning of the tutorial, but everybody used to wear ball gowns, and I had quite the ball gown collection. You never saw me without being in a different ball gown. A new gown for every month. And then every month there was always some sort of role play ball somewhere. Especially in those fairy, like uh, fantasy sims, when they had the fairy balls that would always happen. And I could honestly say the drow moonlight balls were the best. Please don't do things dirty, but you know what I mean. Drows know how to throw a party. It wasn't so uppity as those snobby high elves. <laughs> oh, wow, well, I really miss playing Second Life. All right, so we pull this out a bit so that it fits around it, and I'm going to pull down, what is it, Alt? Oh, here I've been working without a screencast. Start screencast. All right, so I'm going to hold down Alt, and that's going to happen, obviously, because why not? So since Alt and then Loop Cut ain't working, I'm just going to grab a ring here and see if I'm doing again. I'm just going to press this push it into the dress. Normally you can just hold down alt and select the ring and push that in.
pull this out too because you don't want to see any red all it wants is the green all right looking nice looking nice and we have to pull this out a little bit and now we have that kind of thing going on here so we have our ruffle around we have this and I'm going to press shift and select the first layer and fit this to my bodice I mean my chest <laughs> I'm extremely flat chested I remember having boobs but I think that's because I was working on that matria body and everybody has boobs when they're wearing that matria body so me and my default second lifeness I'm, I'm fairly flat so don't judge me I'm going to duplicate this by pressing shift and D and through here and I'm going to press control M and then press X to mirror it oh it would also help if I turned off proportional editing when mirroring things so here and then we're going to press control M then X and it's going to turn black because it means I just flipped everything inside out so we're going to press W and then hit remove not remove doubles uh flip normals and it should be fine so now i'm going to do is put this on my arm All right and there we go we have our sleeves so i think i gave myself more bust than i actually have uh, I'm not complaining about that, but it's a little too far up. I I can do. Let me see if we can push this in a little more. I think it's because I left it so simple and I didn't like uh, what's that word? Turn the particle distance up on the bodice. I just kind of left it. So not much I can really do with that right now. All right. So as is, it is ready to be z brushed and turned into quads we could try um reducing this a bit because it is a little too heavy so let's try it now i wonder if this is the right time to do it but it wouldn't hurt so let's try decimating it as much as we can while keeping the prettiness eee! it went away go back go back go back That's like more than half, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, let's try this as well. Now I actually saw um, a tutorial, a really nice lady, Omo. Her name is Omo. She is so nice. She did a tutorial on how to reduce, how to keep high quality things and bake it so that it looks like it's still high quality but it's really low poly. And I was like, oh, I gotta master that skill. But I never actually sat down and mastered it. So now my stuff is forced to look like this. Or forced to decimate. Anyway. If you have the time. I strongly suggest you check out her channel. And that tutorial. Because it's really good. And I think it would benefit ball gowns. Especially for something like this. A lot better than what I'm doing. So now that we have our ball gown all set up let's export it so that we can slap it into zbrush so i'm going to select the parts um top coat object and then export it as an object and i'm gonna name this one and 
put that. Whoops. No, 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 no. Alright. Take this. And export this as well. And my name does two. Of course, make sure the selection only is selected because it wasn't just now. Yeah, selection only. I name that one. And take this and name this too. And that is going to be two. Alrighty, so that's that. Let's pause it for a second and hop over into ZBrush. Okay, we're making it into the home stretch. Um, only an hour or so in. How are you guys hanging up? Holding up? Still there? Alright, so let's import our files. So on the side, you're going to go import. And I'm going to go to my desktop wherever I save this crap at. It should be at the top. To a ball game tutorial. And we're going to put one in. Uh, see, yes, I guess. And yes, and bring it in. And there's our ball gown. Now, thank you to the two girls or two ladies who contacted me and told me that when I did the ZBrush remesher thing, I did it wrong and told me how to do it right. And I think I remember how to do it properly. So that's what I'm going to show you now. Um, so, what we do is you import your garment. Then you go to poly groups first because I absolutely forgot. And then you do uh, auto groups with UV is what she said to press, I think. Um, then you go to the geometry and you hit Z remesure and you click freeze groups. And then you press Z remesure and it's going to start quieting out your stuff. As soon as this little orange bar right here goes there. It's taking a little bit longer than normal, so I guess give it a second. There we go. And drag and click, and you see that it has all the quads. So what we're going to do next is go to Z plugin at the top, and then select UV master. Whoops. There we go. And I'm going to press poly groups, and use existing UV seams, I think, and then unwrap. And we're going to bring this in, and it should be fine. Now that we have that, we can just go and export. And... Alright. Or well, did I do that wrong, and I was supposed to just use polygroups and then unwrap? Mm, I guess it's fine. I'll use that one, maybe? Mm. Alright. Yeah, I feel like I broke it anyway. So anyway, let's import and repeat with the same one. So let's go and select two this time and bring that in. And then, what she say? Uh, I'm not sure if you have to do it with each part, but I guess it wouldn't hurt. So what was it again? Polygroups and then auto groups with UV. And then geometry, Z remesher, let it remesh. Chuck it, 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 chuck Then bring that in. See that it's gorgeous. Um, then what do I do next? That, polygroups, unwrap. Put it here. And then export. And we're going to put that as two just cuz alright and then we're done with ZBrush I'm sure there's better ways to make it all gorgeous and stuff but I have yet to master the ways of ZBrush so I can't show you yeah. alright so let's go back here in Blender and we're gonna go to a new layer and I'm gonna go file import with front OBJ and I think it was called um, no, no, I want to just do them both at the same time. Import that. It's going to be this and that. And that. Okay, and import this one. Alright, looking good. Let's 
let's create a new window over here and UV all right all right it's not bad actually it's pretty darn good I feel good looking at this mm -hmm. not so much that seems I have jacked it up yeah well there's that we can just oops join these two together and and then I'm unwrap them both oh there we go hey it works right where everybody's happy happy fun times yay let's join these two together and I am not going to join the sleeves these puff parts to that because I want to do something with those all right so this arm joined and unwrap do the same thing with this you unwrap grab these two parts right here join them together join us together then tab yin and you unwrap that got this you and unwrap that and you know I think it came out pretty darn good and it's a lot lighter than what it was and it still retained a good chunk of detail way to go ZBrush you're a credit to your people all right so here we have our ZBrush Z remeshed and it's got a little bit of hardness on here that I'm not particularly fond of so I'm gonna use smooth real quick and turn down the strength there move it out a little bit that's good enough alright so now we have the hard part done now it's time to get into rigging because rigging is not hard at all it's quite easy you just have to believe it and then it will be that's my model <laughs> alright so silliness aside we are going to save myself save us a headache and start assigning uh, materials to this real quick so what I'm going to do is now I'm curious even though that's pretty much how it looked anyway so <gasps> don't say I broke it yeah I broke it give me a second <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I paused it, it just went and it was wrong, so I just moved it back. Alright, so what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to assign materials to it because I'm kind of OCD with that kind of thing right now. So I'm going to remove that material and create a new one and call this Main Skirt. Press Tab, press A, and then assign that. This upper part here. I hmm, guess that was bad on my end because now the ruffles and the skirt are all one thing. That's not good. It's all been fused into one. So let me see, maybe there's some hope there. Nope, it's all one now. Oh, dingle. Oh well, it's not that bad, right? We can still use this to my advantage. Alright, so I'm going to teach you something real quick. So I'm going to press Z and I'm just going to rotate this around so I can see it a little bit better. And then press G and then move it around here. Say we are in quite the pickle where the lace I want on a separate layer. Because of the way we drew it, we can easily see that this around here is the lace. So what we're going to do is turn on the UV sync. I'm sure you've probably seen this in some dev kits and it's like, uh, cannot do because sync is on that, that. This is what we're going to do. We're going to press C and I'm going to select all along the edge here. And I'm going to make sure faces is on because that makes it a little bit easier. And I'm going to select all along the edge of the UV map because we know for sure that that's where the ruffles are and whatever we select will be selected over here so 
So if you did kind of a bang up job, you can press C and then hold in the middle mouse button and erase the lines you don't want. Select it. again Okay, I actually think I want to keep those two over right there. Oh, it's not exactly the prettiest of ruffling jobs, but... It should select and you should be able to get the point of what I'm doing. So, this is what I want, this is the effect that I want to have, and I want all of this on its own layer. So by being able to select it like this, we can create a new material right here, and I think I'm going to call this one Ruffles, and assign that to that, and then we can change the color, and you'll see that this is now on its own uh, separate layer. So anything that's red is on the Ruffles layer. If you don't want it, oops, want it to be red, we just select the part with C and then we assign it back to that default material and it'll be there. So obviously this is pretty gross so I'm just going to color it in some more. Oops, interest A. And color it in some more. And let's go back here. And color in some more. Make sure you press A because it'll still to deselect what you did after you're done. Otherwise, it'll still be selected. So I'm going to press A here. Sorry. And sign. And then do some more. Whoops, not S. Never S. I'm sorry for the wait. This is actually not something I wanted to dedicate time to, but I guess it could help you out if you ever run into such a problem, right? So, sign. And it's almost done with this to default. If it's still looking a little raggedy, we can just um, go to vertex select, click.
click the vertex here, press G, and we can just move it out. <laughs> if you know you, you tried it and it's just not working or quite right, let's just edit the whole part right there and make it look smooth and pretend that it is. Alright, see, doesn't that look a lot better? Ugh, not so much right there, but it's good enough. It's good enough. Um, Alright, well, I guess I can fix some of these right now. There we go. That's much better. So that's how you get around it. Also, you may want to turn off that sync thing because when you're not using it, it's a pain in the butt. So let's go back over here and pretend we're going to edit this and then turn sync off. And we have it. Okay, just double checking here. All right, so we have that. We have ruffles. We have that. Everything looks good, and it is time to rig. So let's grab all our parts. Oh, I forgot. This is going to be. Let's remove this, and we name this sleeve. I'm kind of envious. You guys get to work and listen to music. I have to do all this in silence. <laughs> is maddening i want to dance and no not really dance i just want to jam out to some music i wonder what kind of songs you guys listen to when you're working on stuff i've been listening to kylie minogue as of late i really am a big fan of hers before i didn't like her when i was a kid because they kept playing her song all the time on my hometown puffy sleeve like if you guys or anybody's from philly you know b101 would play uh was it can't get you out of my head all the time that was like one of the signature songs i just got tired of hearing it so now as an adult i'm like oh my god her songs are so good uh, let's see but that was my hometown i miss it i'm not there no more Anyway, so we're going to name this top. Alright, so this is going to be skirt, main skirt, right here, that's default. And just so we don't leave that out, we're going to name this upper skirt. And I'm going to make it blue. Uh, I said blue, but it went to orange. Blue, so this way we know that this is definitely not connected. And anyway green and we can see whatever is supposed to have the same material that has the same material and all right and this one perfect all right like a unicorn threw up and that's what we like i'm gonna turn that thing on All right, so here we go. Our ball gown. It's time to rig. So we're gonna click on dress and then the loops. Pretty much just select everything first. And with everything selected, that sleeve too. I can move it around and see if it's everything. We are going to. So like hold down shift, select the loops, control P, and then automatic weights. That's just the way I've been doing it as of late with these furry avatars. So I'm kind of stuck doing it. <laughs> Alright, so we have that selected. We're going to select the loops again and press pose mode and press R and see if it moves. And it looks like it does. It may not move beautifully, but it moves. And that's all we want right now. So, time to make this work properly because as is, it's no good. We have our 
bug out here and we are going to um let me think about what i'm gonna do next bring in the template i have a template for everything <laughs> and we're going to try and transfer the weights from that template to our ball gown and i think i left the template on my desktop is this it nope uh where's the ball gown first run ball gown bottom there we go all right, so we have the template that I'll include, and I'm gonna press R, negative 90, whoops. <laughs> R, Z, negative 90, and it's gonna flip the right way. And I'm gonna press Control A, and then rotation the scale. And yay, the ball gown is a little bit bigger than the dress. So I'm going to take this, Thing in my bob. Press tab, and we're going to stretch out our template so that it meets the dress. Actually, I think it might be a heck of a lot easier if I just use these. And you want to get as close to your shape as possible. So I'm gonna grab this face. Yeah, that's cool. So we'll grab this face here and press G. Turn on our proportional editing enable, not connected. And I'm just gonna stretch it out to here. We're gonna make sure everything is covered. I'm gonna turn the arrows on instead of that on. About, about there, it should be fine. And from here, we should have enough ball gown coverage. All right, so what we're going to do now is select um, the bottom skirt. And I'm going to move this over to um, its own layer, like right here. And I'm take the template over here with it. Then we're going to select the template first and then the bottom skirt and I'm going to press weight paint and I'm going to transfer the weights alright now what we're going to do is go back into object mode and move the template to a different layer so I'm just object template oops nope that's dress template move it to another layer down here turn on this um, I don't know why Avastar has changed it so that the bones are no longer on x-ray it's a pain in the butt that's why I press R and we're gonna see how it moves and that's not cool right we're gonna try this one more time then another transfer And let's try moving it in a little more. Maybe the template is too big. So G and First one did it, it went perfectly, so I knew this wasn't going to work. Alright, weight paint again, turn that off, and the tools, tools, and then transfer weights. It would also help if I had turned Avastar onto skin. And there we go, that's a lot better. It may look bad in Blender, but when you wear it in world, it's a lot better. So, this and then this right here. See, that's a lot better. 
I guess I made it too big in the first one, so you want to make it just right to get the best rigging. Okay, so now we have that done. It's time to tear up. Object, select the bottom skirt, hold down shift, select the top skirt, uh, press weight paint, and we are going to transfer the weights again. That way it's the same as this. See? All right, top part. The bodice. We are going to go to object mode. I select the default second life skeleton uh, body. Hold down shift. Select the bodice. Press F. Weight paint. Transfer the weights from that. So now it should move pretty well. Let's check these arms out. Check out them guns. That's not good. So we're gonna grab this and uh, see the torso, the net, and remember what I wanted to do. Save some time. Grab these two arm sleeves here. Hit join. Grab this, the net. Weight paint. Transfer weights again. It's much better. I'm pretty sure the sleeves, the upper sleeves were good. So we are fine. Yay! You have rigged your ball gown. Rejoice. Um about these sleeves. What I like to do is well first let me join these two. What I like to do is, I like puffy sleeves there, so I can never get puff right in uh, Marvelous. I just kind of cheat and bring it into Blender and then just inflate it until it gives me that puffy princess sleeve that I like so much. But sometimes it breaks it, so I end up having to do it manually and pulling it out. <clears throat> with the proportional editor. I think the other thing might have worked too. What's that? It's not inflate, but it's not add either. That bubble may have done it as well. I'm not sure. Inflate usually works, but sometimes it breaks it. This blob tends to help out too. But again, it really doesn't break it as much. Oh. Or, you know, sometimes you can just go in Second Life and buy a puffy sleeve and then just slap that on, which is what I really should do. Or grab um, a sphere, a sphere, and then play with that. That's a lot more enjoyable than this, in my opinion. I'm just going to put these back the way they were because I don't really feel like messing with it right now. We're already about to hit two hours and I want this to be done. I'm sure you do too. Alright, so we have our object here. And if this looks a little too plain for you, you can go back in ZBrush and you can sculpt it and make it look beautiful. I have no skill in ZBrush sculpting whatsoever, so I'm not the last person you should ask about that. But I do have fun in um, what's that program I love so much? Sculptress. That's like ZBrush Lite. So I'm gonna. We could just take it over there and play with it. But if you want this to be done right now, I guess we could continue. Maybe that can be like an omake or something. We'll take the bodice in there and then I'll share it with you guys what I got done playing with it okay so we have our dress and it is done it may be heavy as all hell but it was heavier so <laughs> we have it here and we can now begin actually um this is just a personal thing i can't stand it i tend to make dresses a little too round in the front 
apparently dresses are a little flat in the front. There we go. Now, I guess that looks right. <laughs> All right, so now that we have our dress, it's time to export. So select all your parts, and if you didn't put it all on, uh, let's see, put this right here, and uh, which one is this? That's that, and that's template. This is the dress. Okay, we can just do it this way. Move everything to one layer, and we can just press A. Everything selected, and then just go File export avastar export and just name it whatever so ball gown done that yeah okay This is fine. It's just telling me I have a high try count and uh, it can't find the textures for it, which is fine. Don't worry about it. So let's pause this for a second and dive into Second Life and then let's start wearing our ball gown. Okay, so there was a small problem where the dress bottom we had was a little too heavy for Second Life and it didn't want to load it in. So I had to go back and decimate the skirt a little bit before I was able to um, import it in. So actually, I think I might just import the top part, export the top part again as well. So just so it's the right thing. Actually, I'm trying to be cheeky and export the skirt <laughs> with it this time. So I'm just going to call it this one and then here we go. Shut out of star. Export what I want. And then export it again. Just cause. Alright, now we're gonna dive into Second Life and I'm gonna try and import some parts to it. So I'm just gonna take the skirt part. Remember, lowest and low on zero. Skin weight. It's only three frames. <laughs> also, I'm on the beta grid. You guys know I don't have this kind of dough. Sometimes I wish I did. Just imagine the yard sales I could hit. Heck, I might be able to actually go to the arcade. <laughs> the dream. <laughs> anyway, so just gonna put the skin weight as well. And it's gonna be 15 L. So it's not as heavy as, you know, you would think. And we're going to res these two parts together. I forgot to bake a texture for these, so they're going to be kind of, you know, raw. I apologize. And because my computer is vastly blowing up, it's going to take a second for these to load. Shut up, CC Cleaner. I'll clean it later. Um, I guess during the time I'm going to kind of strip. So I can put the gown on. Um, <clears throat> uh, for, oh, for goodness sake, you guys saw me naked before. And at one point, I was doing uh, jiggling my boobs to scary spooky skeletons. So it's fine. So I'm just going to take these off. Not my bet and my boxing glove. Well, uh, a lady doesn't carry a bet or boxing gloves. So. <laughs> Alright, it's cool. It's totally cool. Let's see, I take that off. And now there's a naked zero here. Alright, I'll take my kicks off too. Jeez. Uh, I guess that's good enough. Alright, so here we have our dress parts that came in, and because I forgot to put the texture on them, and make the texture on it, I'm just going to color it some basic colors. 
So, uh, I don't know. Go emo with this, maybe? Uh, I think that would be a nice black. And the puffs, which should be popping in any second now. I wish I made a bottom ruffle, like around here. I think that would have been pretty. Alright, so I'll just take these two. Oh, the whole point of me doing that was so I could link those two together. Dang, have it. Alright, now I wanna link these together. They don't have to be lined up right. I think I'm gonna put one side by side to make it easier to select that it. Uh, link that together. And then press add. Wait for it to snap onto my body. Hopefully, I actually remember to press the add weight button. I did, right? <laughs> it shouldn't take that long to snap on. There we go. So, there we have our ball gown. And when we walk around in it, it moves a lot because the weight I use was like very pelvis central. I think this was made before uh, fit mesh was a thing. But as you can see, I'm able to move around in it just fine. Um, you're going to need some alphas, obviously. And there's a huge split here. OMG, I done effed up. Uh, I'm gonna have to fix that in Blender. Let me see if it shows up here. Now, what causes that to split? Turn the bones on. Ah, right, yeah, there's the split. Alright, let's see what's pulling on us. Let's turn it this way. Mm-hmm. Weight paint. And we're going to get in there. And we're going to press this button right here, the vertex selection for masking. And we're going to select this dot. And when you select the dot there, where is it? Avastar moves it every time it updates. Uh, let's see. Rigging. Skinning. Fitting. Uh, maybe in tools again. Normally it would show you on the side. Like a up oh, there it is vertex weight. All right, let's see. Let's make this a bit bigger so we can see chest. Uh huh. So we can try editing it and see if we can repair it. So right now the fact that it's the torso. What's that middle part right there? torso and the chest. This was causing this to tear. So I'm turn some of the heat off of it and see if that mends anything. Nope. It only makes it worse. It's okay. So let's see. I have no idea what's causing this to tear like this. It's like, oh, I've always checked the pelvis. It's always the pelvis. But for once, the pelvis is innocent. Shocking. Huh. I don't get it. What could be causing it to tear? Huh. Huh. 
oh, ugh, I hate when you I color stuff and it's the same color as error stuff. I'm like, oh, it's on that bone. I'm like, no, that's just the way it's colored. Ugh. All right, so let's see, let's see. Let's remove the chest weights from down here. Let's turn it only to that and see if this seals it a bit. Just a little bit. Remove pelvis weight, just to check. Oh, what could be the problem? Oh, right, here we go. Hip left. There it is. So there's some hip left activity going on in here. And pelvis. It's always the pelvis. Collar left. Pelvis. Nope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So basically, I'm just clicking the dots and turning the um, those things. To see what causes the best reaction. And if it can fix itself. So I should fix that. Doesn't tear on that side and it doesn't tear over here. Alright, so we should be good now. So let's just re-export it. So there's only that part. This is one of the benefits of not joining everything. We can just replace this one part of the dress. Maybe it would have probably been faster if I just exported the whole gown. <laughs> Alright, so we have this done. And now we are going to have to decorate it. Because who ever heard of a blank ball gown? What, no flowers or nothing on it? For shame. <laughs> Alright, so what we do to... Uh, I'm not entirely sure what's going on upstairs, so just ignore it. I'll link it, and let's get rid of this book. Oh wait, wait, we need a shade of black first. Okay, now we can get rid of this one. a lot better or is it still broken uh it's it's broke well I've messed up let's just pretend it's not there 
I'm sure when you do it, you won't encounter that issue. I just don't have the time to try to fix it right now. Um, so, we have our um, garment here. And we're going to try to decorate it. So what I like to do is load up my pull stand. The yield fox lab that has yet to let me down. So plop up here. The dress bins, like I said, alpha. You're definitely going to need one. And turn off my AL so I can actually stand on here properly. And I'm going to get into the T-pose. So, here in the T-pose, and let's try making myself look a little more ladylike. Blind, can't see anything. Uh, let's see, necklace. I had a really pretty necklace. Neck. Let's see. Cast. And uh, this is the one I usually wear all the time. Always has a necklace on. It's very rare for me to not have it on. And I want to find some decorative stuff. So I had some roses in here somewhere. Um, rose, rose, rose. Rose, rose, rose. Mm -hmm. And that's rose tea. Rose arch, full perm, rose. I'm actually going to take that out and do something fancy with that if it's what I think it is. Uh, uh, no thorns, but that's bum. Alright, so we have our roses. And you can just slap them on wherever you think looks right. Oh, hey, we broke the two hour mark. And can you believe it? We're almost done. And then you can start decorating the way you want. Put as many or as less as you think uh, will work. I'm sorry, I'm not very good at decorating uh, dresses. Oh, I think it would have been better if I had this on the side, don't you think? I had to make the break on the front. So now my roses are going to be on my hip or something like that. And the entry, uh, it just had more sass, I think. All right, so big rose right there because why not and maybe a little rose up here We should put more all down the side to cover up the rip, <laughs> the rip in it. <laughs> uh, put that right there, that right there, I guess. Um, maybe some on the side. Now, stuff like these, you can just attach to the dress and like the default second life attach here and it should look right. But these are here, the lower roses, which need to go here. And again, shift here. I find it a little bit easier to decorate in Second Life than I do in Blender. I guess I'm so used to that. And then Second Life has so many more resources. <laughs> I 
You know, I wish I had like a skull somewhere. That would have been pretty to put on your hip, right? Make sure your roses aren't floating. And you may want to display the leaves, I uh, guess, on there. Guess it would have been smart to tint the roses before I started duplicating it so vigorously, right? Right. Alright. Alright, let's just focus on the front right now. We can worry about the back later. Um, let's say you want to add pearls or something here. Uh, how do you do pearls? Well, two methods. You can type pearls <laughs> into here and wait for the library to come up. There was a default pearl necklace inside the library. Uh, I guess they took it out. Alright, so, new game plan. You make your own pearls. <laughs> yeah, it's so gonna build and you make the circle and we just... Really? No pearl? Oh yeah, I forgot. It was just called necklace. And it was... In here somewhere. Older outfits. Let's see, one of these things had a pearl necklace. Because I remember being like, ooh. Ugh. Oh well, fine, whatever. I'm sure we could find a pearl texture, right? It's Second Life, it's the internet. There, they should be everywhere. Um, let's see. Something complicated for no damn reason. I'm just going to take this and I'm going to make this small. Remember, the smaller the pearls, the prettier they are, but more work you have to do. And it also helps if the posting isn't turned sideways. I guess I should pay attention to that. So I'm just going to rotate it. Oh, bananas. Yeah, good enough, I think. Yeah, there we go. So, let's here. Oh, much better. Okay, so. Um, smaller. And we're just going to grab it. Hold down shift and make another one. And we're just going to create a bunch of little pearls. Or wooden beads. It could be wooden beads because I don't have a pearl texture on me right now. I would if I could find that stupid thingamabob. What was it called? Necklace that was, used to be in the inventory that they probably took out. So try to make it drape as naturally as you, you can. Or go bananas however you like it. You're beating, your manage on mission is your limit. Mm. 
am. <laughs> this is why I hate beat work. Ugh, goodness gracious me. And let's rotate. Out here. Okay, so it's not exactly natural, but it's some beads. And they are all linked together. And we're going to give them a blank. Let me see if I have pearl. Yeah, that's cool. We'll, we'll deal with that later. And get all artsy with it. Let's put a little tiny rose at the bottom of this. So this is going to be our jewelry. Alright. It looks awful, doesn't it? But, um, it's just to, so you can get the gist of what I was talking about. Oh, I could have done like Sailor Moon and had a bunch of pearls around the top part of it. Oh. Well, it's too late for that now. Well, now we go and export all of this. Because the rose is indeed full perms, they didn't give us the day for it, which is a really stupid. I hate when people do that. So we're going to have to go and open up our dark storm and then export it out. So give me one second. Okie doke. So we are now here in dark storm. And I'm going to select all the attachments. As you see, I changed the dress up when I was waiting for everything to load. So what we're going to do... Is just select all the parts. One second. Oh, shoot. Okay, so I'm gonna select all the parts that I want to export. This one, this one, this one, this one, two. And we're gonna export all the parts. So file, save as, collada, as for all the textures, all that jazz. I'm gonna call this attachments. And we're gonna wait for it to export out. So that's saved. No oh, crap, it saved as that. That's not good. So try it one more time. Okay, well that's saved. So we're good. And now we're just gonna go into Blender again. Put it here. Yes. Go to a new layer. And then we're gonna go file, import day and um so what if I save it right here attachments alright so we have all our attachments and we're gonna keep them all linked together like this because that's good and they like that and we're gonna place them where it is basically once you get one of them in the right position they all get to the right position if you have it all selected. So don't let go. Hang on. Don't drop it. It is so hard to go from Second Life, uh, Second Life's camera and movement controls back into Blender. right it fits here but I was missing this one was messed up so I'll put this back over here so that's everything and everyone we're going to select them all and then join them together 
Wait for your blender to keep stop breaking.